We're here with episode 11 of Inside the Lair with 2019 CUNYAC Men's Soccer Conference champion Lemirana Diallo, who also was a 2019-2020 Scholar Athlete of the Year in the CUNYAC. He's a busy man, a very decorated career on the soccer field and off of it, really has a bright future ahead of him, and we are lucky to have him join us today amongst his very busy schedule. Thank you, Lemirana. Good to hear from you. Thank you, John. How are you doing today? I am doing well. Emirata, you have a very interesting story out of most of the people I've interviewed. Your journey to BMCC was really, really interesting. I mean, you come to the United States, you know, straight from Senegal, a French-speaking country. You have to take the tests just to get into the American colleges here. To me, it really feels like just an amazing story of just grit and perseverance. The time you arrived at BMCC, you really just took off. But let's start with the first thing. You look at the colleges and you see BMCC. Why did you choose to attend BMCC? As you just stated, uh, I came from Senegal, a speaking country. I went to an English school for like eight months. And then from that English school, I applied to CUNY and get accepted at BMCC and a couple other kidney schools, but I end up attending BMCC. There's like a couple of reasons why I choose BMCC. Um, first, I would say because of its location. The tuition also is affordable. Most importantly, the resources and, you know, the diversity um, that I've seen. And from the people that I spoke to, there's, a, you know, couple of people who recommended me BMCC because they went there and, you know, they knew um, the environment, the diversity and the helpfulness of, you know, the administration and most importantly, the soccer team. I came from a place, Senegal, where football is like soccer, how we call it back home, we say football. <laughs> That's, that's one thing that I had to learn when I came here. I used to say football, and then I find out in America, when you say football, you're talking about something else different. Soccer is something that we do like every single day back in my country. We do it in the street. Sometimes there's not like enough, you know, soccer field, so we do it in the street. That's my favorite sport. I love playing soccer. It's something that kind of helped me, you know, focus, you know, and kind of helped me get that energy as I go in my academics as well. The transition from that English school to BMCC was very smooth. The admission office, it was really helpful, you know, and they helped me go through the process and get integrated, you know, as soon as I get there. And there has like a, a lot of support programs that help me connect with people from my country or people from my back home, people who speak probably the same language that I speak. And that helps make the difference, John. Also, another reason you chose BMCC, you also like to swim. In addition to your love of soccer, that's another reason you chose the Borough of Manhattan Community College. Right. Uh, I love swimming. So I started swimming when I was to Lero. So I used to go to the river, you know, and I used to live in a village. Uh, it's not a swimming pool. It's kind of scary because the water kind of, you know, it's a river that kind of will go down to the hill. So you have to be careful. If you're not strong, the water going to take you away. I love swimming and I love the BMCC swimming pool. It's really cool that they have the locker rooms. You can go there, you know, go swim. After swimming, like a 30 minute, you go back to your classes. It was for me, one way, you know, to de-stress and relax in between classes or in between, you know, meetings and all those things. Here on episode 11 of Inside the Lair with Lamara Diallo, a 2019 CUNYAC Men's Community College Conference Champion and the Scholar Athlete of the Year in the conference here in 2019-2020. So let's get into your soccer career, Lemarana. You played two seasons, 2018 and the 2019 season. But when you came in, one thing that Coach Modu Sek said he really enjoyed about you was that you had such a great understanding of the game, how to move off the ball. You were a striker. What made your adjustment to college soccer so easy? As Coach Modu mentioned, I came from, you know, a place where, you know, Soccer is sort of like a religion where like people practice, you know, every single day. And I started playing soccer with the ball when I was too little and I used to 
hide my sack ball to take it to the school because my mom wouldn't let me. I used to take it and hide it at night or give it to a friend. Yeah, hey, please, you know, keep this ball. And in the morning, once I go out of the house, stop by that place, take the ball, take it to school. So when I went to try out, it wasn't easy, to be honest. My first day, we did a lot of running, a lot of push-up, and a lot of fitness. And then Coach Moto gave us the ball. So it was like, you know, control pass, control pass, and how to position yourself and all those things. After the tryout, the first section, and the second day, the coach um, called me and, you know, talked to me. He see the way I move with the ball and, you know, how I control and how I, how I interact with other players. And he asked me, you know, about my academics and all of that and if, you know, I'm in a good academic standing, you know, because that's one thing that you have to do, be in a good academic standing to join the SAC team. So, and from that moment I started, I used to, you know, I can play like a different position in the field. Coach Modu saw that and he spoke to me at first, for my first season, I used to play as wing because that time we had a very promising forward, so I used to play as wing. And then as I moved to my second season, he moved me in to play forward. A position that I love because I love scoring and I, I love winning. So that was how I ended up in the soccer team. Speaking of winning, you are a part of 2019 conference championship team. The previous year, you had won the regular season title. Giovanni Johnson was there. You had a lot of goal scorers. Yeah. And this season, Modu just reloads, as he always does. Sadu <laughs> Diallo's your top scorer. Brother Dejivi's there. A lot more scorers. You actually have your best game of your career against Bergen County Community College. You played very well in that game. It's Bergen County Community College. You come in and you net two goals at an assist. Go to this championship season. You win the conference title. You also get to the regional final. First time since 2012. We'll go two parts. Let's talk about the conference championship game and what it was like to go through this season into that championship game. It's a seesaw battle. You win this game 5-4. You drop the first goal, score the next two, yeah. go up 2-1. They tie it up. You go into halftime, 3-2. And then they take the lead on you, and you score two goals late in the game in the 82nd and 84th minute. You're a champion. Just talk about the seesaw of emotions from that game. It was awesome. Probably one of the most exciting games that I ever played. We knew in our mind as coach, you know, Moto said, you know, have fun. He usually said to us, you know, once we about, you know, to start a game, he's like, boys, go out there, have fun, play hard, communicate, touch the ball, play. No matter what, keep playing. I want you to play the game. That's what we did. We took his advice. We get into the game. They scored first. And then we keep playing because that's what we know to do best. We come back. They score another goal, they took the lead again, but we're still playing. As long as there's like at least one minute or two minutes to play, there's a chance, you know, to score and take the lead and win the game. We score that goal, you know, at that moment that we came back, we tied, there was like 4-4. Four, four. We knew we were going to win the game because the most difficult part was done is like to tie that game and at that point we knew that you know our adversary kind of go down because they was not expecting that to happen at that time and then we had that corner kick and then our defense he just have a header and then that was in it was unbelievable and we were so happy. Playing with QCC, they are our rival because we lost against them, you know, last year. we like, no, we're not losing this one. We have to take it back home to BMCC. Now you go to the regional playoffs. Against Queensboro, you're able to win one nothing. Ray J. Officer scoring 67th minute. Then Mohamed Cisse, who really was the engine that made that offense go in the midfield, he gets a goal 55th minute. The up end Suffolk, who really you guys had huge battles with. You get to the regional final for the first time since 2012. 
talk about the rest of that ride. The journey wasn't easy because most of our games was away games. Sometimes we have to take the bus, travel an hour, half an hour, sometimes two hours. By the time we get there, your body is kind of a little bit tired. You have to wake your body up by doing some warm up. But we did it because we were so determined. It was like a mindset that we had in the group. The group was really good. The group that we have, and, and I still I know we have some good players and team players. We cheer each other up and we support each other. We meet usually in the cafeteria. We have meals together and some people that they have, you know, issues with some classes and we give them some academic support and we support each other. So that's what makes the difference and that's what makes most of our games easy. When we get there, you know, we get that energy. Some of us sometimes are sleepy because it's sleeping in the bus and when we get there. But once we get in the field, you know, we bring that energy. We do those warm up and we sing, we dance and then we start the game. Going to the regional, it's not easy games because we play with the best teams. Probably to beat those teams, you have to be the best as well. We did it. We played with Nassau and then we lost that game. It was an exciting journey. We enjoyed it and we had fun. We are at episode 11 of Inside the Lair with 2019 Cunyac Conference Champion Lemarana Diallo, also a 2019-2020 Conference Scholar Athlete of the Year. And he joins us here on episode 11 of Inside the Lair. Not only did you get it done on the soccer field, you got it done off the field. 364 GPA, you are a mathematics major. I mean, outstanding, by the way. As much as you handled on the field, what you handled off the field, unbelievable balance. I mean, you got Dean's List all four semesters. You're on the student government as an association senator president of the Association of Students of African Descent, and you got the Scholar Leader Award as well. <laughs> Nothing you really couldn't do at that point. And also for change and climate change. Let's uh, start with the first thing, going to how you built such a great GPA and to the mathematics major. Originally, you were computer science. And why did you switch your major to mathematics? I started as a computer science major at BMCC. I always have my goals in my mind what I want to do. And along the way, I noticed that computer science and mathematics, they had, they kind of related. There's a lot of math into the computer science field and into the computational, you know, field. So then I decided, let me do mathematics, you know, get all those math courses and all those things away. So once I go to my bachelor's degree, I can get to focus on to computer science classes. At this point, I'm going for my bachelor's degree, apply mathematics to data science and cryptography at John Jay. I get accepted. So yeah, I get accepted to John Jay, Baruch, um, City College, and City Tech. So I end up taking the offer from John Jay. All right. You also told me, too, in that pre-interview about mathematics, you did some tutoring as well. Kids outside the college, to help kids at college. You gave me an interesting philosophy of how you teach math and try to get kids to enjoy it. It is really complex material. How are you able to get people to enjoy it and then succeed in it and learn it? Mathematics is a subject for me like any other subject. You know, That's how I see it. And it's a language. It has its own language. It's like when you come to U.S., if you don't speak English, you won't be able to communicate and understand other people or for other people to understand you. That's how I see mathematics. It has its own language. So once you help people, you know, understand that language, it sort of, you know, make it easier for them to navigate through the subject and through the topic. And if you understand mathematics, there's a lot of patterns, you know, once you able to identify those patterns and kind of understand them, you could be able to make other people also understand. When I came here, I see, I noticed that like a lot of people kind of struggle in mathematics. That was also one of the reasons why I kind of switched my major because I'm like, you know, probably I can do more good at BMCC and then once I get to my bachelor's degree, I can go back to my computer science courses. I love mathematics. I believe that, you know, some people come to hate mathematics, not because of the subject itself, but because the way the subject was 
introduced to them or the message that they get from either the professor or either whoever that could be, you know, probably sometime. But what I learned, you know, during my time of tutoring, working with high school and middle school, is that if you connect the subject to something that those individuals love to do, or at least understand or have fun to do, then they would love it and they would understand it and they would have fun doing it. That's what I noticed because math is all around us. It's everywhere. Whenever you're speaking, you're not going to have a conversation, even if two, three sentences without using a math language, a math word or a math formula. You also told me that you won an award, I think, what was it, grammar school or high, uh, high school, you said, they were the top math student in your grade or class? Yes, my last year in middle school, I was awarded a bit uh, because I spent four years in uh, middle school. So during my four years, I always come first on top of my class. And then my math scores was above of every other you know, student's math score. That was something... Because the thing is, I had a good uh, math professors in middle school and also high school. The way they used to taught, you know, the math subject, you know, just, it's amazing. Just, uh, you know, help you understand and help you, um, you know, love and have fun. Episode 11 of Inside the Lair here with Lamarana Diallo. You were a student governor association senator talk about that experience you had to run for office you had to put out posters or ads and um, what did you get to do it was a great experience and a very rewarding experience in terms of you know leadership in terms of teamwork in terms of collaboration in terms of you know advocating for others this is um my first time getting involved i started as a student rep what they call student representative they are those students they're not part of like they are not body members of the student government so they just volunteer you know to help the, the current student government um you know uh, work toward their agenda so we use i used to go help with organizing even advocating for students or putting out posters or reaching out to students that's how i started the next semester, I had a, a friend who was running for president, Sheku. He's been there for the years. So I was a, one of his campaign manager because at that time I was a club president. So if you're a club president, you cannot be a voting member of the student government. There's going to be a conflict of interest because the student government are the ones who charter the clubs. See, they, the student government charter the club, give them funding, and monitor them, you know, on using the funding and organizing the event. That was one of the reasons why I couldn't serve as student government at that time, but I helped uh, my friend, you know, get elected as president. And uh, at the end of my term um, as a club president, and there was a vacant position at the student government, and then I applied. And I applied, I went to interview, and it's not an easy process because there's always like a great candidate. You know, you have to go out, get signature, ask the students to vote for you. And I did that. I did some posters, you know, go around the campus, speak to students, tell them what you're going to do and how you're going to bring change. Here on episode 11 of Inside the Lair with 2019-2020 Scholar Athlete of the Year in the CUNYAC and Lamarana Diallo. You're the president of the Association of Students of African Descent. Can you just elaborate a little bit on that club? The club is for African descent, but uh, as you know, in the college, so we welcome everyone. So there was people from different places, not only from Africa, people from here, people from Australia in the club. So we had a, a lot of members. So <clears throat> there was a time we had like uh, more members than any other like a uh, club in the college. So what we do is, you know, we trying to build a community. We trying to uh, 
build a place where everybody feel welcome, where everybody can come, share their experience, and feel supported. That was our goal, and unite people, you know, and educate people, you know, about the culture, and also, you know, um, present the culture to other people so that they can understand, so that we can have a better community, a community that, you know, include everyone. So in that club, I served as vice president and then president of the club. So during my time as president, uh, we was able to visit some state. Um, we went to the National Museum of Washington, D.C. I was in charge of students with, of course, with the advisor. We went there, we visit. And we also host like workshop. We invite people sometimes from the college or outside of the college to come um, to talk about a particular topic that gonna educate all students. So it was a really great experience. And as you know, there's always people like me who come from, you know, not speaking no English speaking countries. When they come here, it's sometimes hard to connect with others because of the language barriers. So we take all those things into consideration. So we try to um, create a sort of mentorship, you know, where, you know, somebody who speaks the same language as you is gonna sort of mentor you, be there for you if you have any issue, whether academic or whether college-wise, so that that person can, can connect you to the right resources at BMCC and make sure that you be, you be successful at BMCC. Here with episode 11 of Inside the Lair with CUNY Scholar of the Year and a CUNYAC Community College Men's Soccer Champion, Lemirana Diallo, who helped that team go to the regional final for the first time since 2012. Final question I'll bring up to you, Lemirana. Now, obviously, you're committed to John Jay. You're going to be a greyhound, although this still is what's going on with you now. You've got an internship on Wall Street. Again, math, I think you're in great shape <laughs> for that type of field. It's you know, the algorithms and trading. Just kind of let our viewers know, what has what that internship been like so far? Into that job, that internship, um, it's, uh, it's a financial service um, firm. So I get to do what they call financial need analysis for clients. You know, you sit down with people, you go into their financial uh, situation, you know, and find ways to help them, you know, uh, improve um, their finances. So, and there's a lot of learning into that thing because you have to go through some first learning to licensing and all those things. But uh, I find it, you know, really rewarding helping somebody, you know, get from point A from the dark to the light is something, you know, really rewarding. It's, it's way better than, you know, all that money probably sometimes you can get. Um, I honestly, sometimes it just, when I think about it, it just makes me feel happy that I make somebody happy. I take them from the dark to the light. You've been stellar with us, really, from our interviews to try to get you ready for that CUNY interview for the Scholar Athlete of the Year, Lemirana. And for all our viewers checking this, please go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash BMCC Athletics. You can see that interview with my guest here, Lemirana Diallo, nice enough to step away from bringing joy to everyone and keeping them calm with their finances and his internship here on Wall Street. Lamarana, thank you for joining us. Thank you, John. You know, it was a pleasure to be here with you. And, you know, I want to say, you know, thanks to BMCC Athletic and thanks to BMCC 